This is Infection, the survival podcast recorded live on Tuesday, August the 3rd, 2021, episode 342. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to another episode of Infection, the survival podcast. Infection is your source for the latest information on survival video games. My name is Nick Craig, your host, your illustrious host, I should say. You can check me out on various social media platforms by visiting my website, nickcraig.net. You can also visit nickcraig.com if you'd like to check out my daily political rantings each and every weekday morning. And of course, the most important website on the internet, infectionpodcast.com. Joining us as he does each and every week, his name is Brian with an I Aldridge. He also yes. did not update the title oh, in man, the show so notes, sorry. the date or the episode. Good yeah, afternoon. I did it totally catch up. I mean, did, no, it, did, it, it totally did not. I thankfully say the date on a daily basis now, so I was good to go. But he is joining us, nice. Brian. Yes, we got this. Who put the I in. I didn't update the date, Aldridge. Hello, <laughs> hello, hello, Brian. How are you doing on this wonderful Tuesday <laughs> evening? With dog days. Oh, right, well, I'm doing good. Yes, I'm. I actually am doing very well. We uh, went on a trip over the weekend Ooh. in the mountains at the cabin, and uh, go because there was a family reunion for my uh, my wife's side of the family, hmm. and so we just had a lot a good time. Went up there, made it back. We were worried about not making it back because of mudslides, because oh, of. You know, yeah, that, there, that would have been quite there was a heavy rainstorm. That would have been quite a story to tell. Be like, guys, we're here. Brian died in a, in a mudslide. I know. know. 41 <laughs> weeks later, he was just, my best friend. That would have been quite the story well, to tell. Part of the problem is I'm going up there this coming weekend, too, and I'm coming back on Monday. So hopefully there's no issues to where uh, it doesn't mess with my Tuesday. But well, it, that, it, it, that, was, that was a lot of fun. Well, I'll yeah, say this. we'll figure it out. One good thing about the hour-long show, it's a lot more maintainable for a single person if that oh, yeah. ever arrives. Yeah, because it's kind of difficult easier. for a single person to do multiple hours when you yeah, don't I have do three hours a day, the and it's tough, but I do have commercials. Yeah. So I don't, no commercials here. No sponsors here. I know. You can kind of be like, all right, I just got to work to this next commercial. I'm literally <laughs> yeah. like, oh, 618. <laughs> Christ almighty. I've got to go till 30. All right. <laughs> Let's buck up for the next 12 minutes. Where can yep. people find you online, well, Mr. Right. Aldridge? If you want to find me at Brian Aldridge on Gabber Parlor, of course, my blog, biteoftech.com. And then if you go to our, as Nick said, go to our website, infectionpodcast.com. If you check that out on the upper right hand side, there's our Steam or Discord group. I almost said Steam group, uh, but our Discord group. And that's where, if you think there's news topics we should be talking about, uh, any articles or just uh, games maybe that are coming out that we don't discuss, go put that in the news channel. We review that before every show. Uh, if, Steam group hasn't been working lately, but uh, I'm hoping that some point or maybe with the time change that we'll now be able to do notifications of the live show again. Uh, we also have video forms of the podcast, Twitch, YouTube, BitChute, and DLive, uh, and then audio forms of the podcast, the lower right, and uh, whatever platform you're using, go there. If you are going to listen, it's really helpful if you follow along with the show notes. Just go to the particular episode that we're going to be discussing, and you can click on the video links. There's articles. There's video player, audio player in there. Makes it really nice and easy for you to kind of follow along and follow some of the topics that we've been discussing uh, in each episode. If you want to support us, just go to infectionpodcast.com forward slash support. And then, uh, yeah, there's we have Subscribestar, Amazon, Humble, Bundle, Prime Gaming. So a lot of different ways you can support the show and uh, help us go to some convention next year. <sighs> yeah, that's eventually. Maybe. It's just, uh, <laughs> we'll knows? see. It's all, it's all fucked up. All right. Um, yes, all of I concur with all of Brian's statements. You can follow us on all those various platforms. By the way, the podcast did get posted this week. That was encouraging. Um, fig figured that snafu out after last <laughs> week. So, um, Mr. Brian, looking at our show notes today, there is a severe lacking. I feel like this, this is a summer thing. There's a severe... Yeah. Lack of um, gaming, uh, uh, individual game news. It's a lot of general overarching gaming news. Is this the, is this the time of the year where there's just not really a People lot are going of things vacation. going on? I yeah. mean, some kids are kids are going to be going back to school in a month and what a month or so. Yep. Month so. Um, 
And so people are getting their vacations in and doing all their things. And I think a lot of people take time off during this time. And it's kind of like our uh, between Thanksgiving and Christmas oh, time. Uh, this is kind of that same thing with summer <laughs> where a lot of people just have kids off of school. And so they're they're out doing things. Yeah. And so I think that, that we're kind of having that. I mean, there's a lot of other news happening with the industry itself. But as far as gaming news, there's kind of been a minimal of big things coming up. Um, mm. Some delays and other we'll be talking about a little bit later in the show, but uh, mostly just scandal. It seems like. Yes, yeah, so we've turned into the uh, this week the TMZ of uh, of gaming I know. news. <laughs> yep. So those we'll see we'll see how this goes. I mean, hopefully this kind of starts to pass and we get back to normal gaming news. But there's a lot on a couple different topics today. One thing I wouldn't wanted to mention first is with Windows 10, uh, they put out a patch. There's been some odd issues with recent patches for uh, gaming performance. Okay. I think a lot of interacting with the video cards and, and just things not running right. So they released a patch that you have to go and manually install. So Ooh, if you go to the KB. updater, yeah, you can click download and install. It fixes some issues with mode. Uh, um, and you know fixes some of the performance that you're seeing in a lot of these uh in windows 10 right now with a lot of games so um first of all what was happening was the power plans and game mode were not working after the update weren't working as intended so you're getting lower frame rates um it was your performance was going down um you know and it was only doing having it wasn't happening for everybody but for you know certain users and users using laptops and having weird things happen. So if this, if you've been noticing a drop in performance, probably for a couple of weeks now, I'm trying to remember if it was like a week or maybe two, two weeks max since they put out this update uh, that started causing some performance issues, then I would encourage you to go. And I manually installed it on my laptop. I'll do it on this computer here a little bit later um, after the show. But that should make a big uh, difference in the performance to where you're not getting the, the big lag and, and low FPS. So well, that's sure just a was, notice that was put out today. Check it out. I'm sure that was affecting people that were probably just on the fringe of playing games. Like if you were yep. just at like 30 or 35 FPS and then all of a sudden oh, yeah. this update, now you'd be at 24. And the difference between 24 and 35 frames is only yep. 10. And if you said, well, what's the difference between 60 and 70? It's not that big of a difference. Between 25 and 35 is a dramatic change, made literally unplayable. Yep um well so, i mean once you go over 60 your eye doesn't really notice oh I don't get into that frame, debate. Each, well, well you know what i'm saying it doesn't uh, notice each frame it may notice yeah. a smoother it may feel smoother but your eye isn't catching every frame it's your eye still smooths out every, i mean your eye does, eye does that for everything it does it's smoothing out and kind of filling in the blanks and things you're not directly looking at so we'll see but yeah, we won't get into that debate today. So you can, there'll be a but link that, in our show notes on infectionpodcast.com where you can go in and figure out how to get yeah. that update installed. Yes. Now, Nick, I think this next one may bring you a little bit of joy, um, but I think we kind of saw it coming. We, I, we have some predictions in our book, but Google is talking about possibly starting, starting to license out its Stadia game streaming platform to industry partners. Now, this could okay. mean two things. That this is either a positive in the right direction, or this is them kind of stepping back um, from the Stadia platform itself. Remember what I told you from the very beginning with Stadia? What did I? Do you remember what I said? Uh, kind of from the very beginning with Stadia. Yeah, actually, I have your quote. This is going to revolutionize okay. gaming. It will be the best platform that's not, ever no, existed. That's not I, what I will see. dump no, Steam not. to play all of my. I, I'm reading the quote right here. It's on Infection Podcast. Uh -huh, okay, I thought you might actually have remembered what I said. No, I, um, I, you said you were going to return all of your Steam games and you were going to be exclusively stated. No, that's no, what no, I no. You said. <laughs> uh, no, but I did say <laughs> that Google was using that as a testing platform to be able to build something bigger for enterprise and that then mm -hmm. they'd probably be dumping more of the stadia part of it if it wasn't very successful which is what they tend to do almost everything they make <laughs> yes um, literally <laughs> yes so uh there's some job listings at google that are making people think that they're going to start white labeling the stadia platform now this can also mean that they're now going to start releasing those enterprise products for doing remote uh, and cloud uh, development. That's more probably what I think this is. Less of them maybe stepping away from cloud gaming, but using it what for the what the whole thing has been testing and helping them create, which is the that's all they really care. They don't care about Stadia. 
uh, uh, just having been in Google and knowing them, they could care less about Stadia itself. They care about the tech behind it and what they're building towards with uh, business part with business partners and business products. And I think this is them now. Uh, they've gotten the Stadia product itself to a level where they're comfortable with it. And I think what they'll be doing is just getting the hardware out there where they can do this kind of cloud development, you know, for Unreal Engine and probably other uh, engines as well. So uh, that see, this is a lot based on just job postings at Google, but it looks like they're getting ready to push and, and get those out. Uh, Brian, will you refresh? So that could be a positive, or yeah, I can yeah, you're, refresh. You're, it could be, it could be either a good thing or something they're going to be scaling back. Okay. Um, and for people that don't and aren't familiar with the term white labeling, that's when a company or you know, that's when a company makes a product that they can essentially rebrand and sell out to other providers. So you could Google would offer Stadia as a streaming service to a large company as their platform. That's yeah. that's what white labeling is. Uh, so it's still. Google's product, a large company, you know, and I'm trying, but, but know the here, but the thing, the track record is they tend to, okay, look at hangouts. What did they do once they released it enterprise? They rolled it over into something else and kind of got rid of hangouts as they were. Yeah. Right. Uh, there are no hangouts like, you know, them now um, they've, they've done similar things with, with a lot of other, of their other products that just, they certain launch pad to get, get the understanding. It. They built something else, and then they kind of scale down the, whatever product it was that they started with that the consumers, us out there, not the business people, were actually using. Uh, and they're like, "Oh, sorry, you know, this is this is going away." And that's just there's a website dedicated to showing all the products that Google's Google has canceled. So you can check those out. Just Google. yeah, and and essentially, you know, they'd be they'd be they'd stop. They're not going to, they likely won't stop offering state. Well, I mean, they eventually will, but this might be a way for them to maybe keep the uh, lights on a little bit longer if they can find some companies that are interested in essentially licensing their service for other uses that are not gaming. Uh, I don't know what well, those and would be. The, yeah, there's already this a would bunch be good of those. For, for CAD. And I mean, these this exists, could be good. Though. So this is. There's already services exist, that but, exist. Yeah. But if you can get one that's very industry standard you know as True. far as it's a good good enough decent price it's an incredibly stable platform that enough companies are using it becomes the standard google has the capacity to do that this is kind of a niche this is a very niche thing that i don't think they saw coming at all before COVID. i mean as far as the profitability mm -hmm. uh, i think they figured it would be something that would slowly ramp up but this with COVID, is the perfect thing for getting it to where because that was really the limitation of some of what I think game developers were really wanting it, running into mostly is how do you remotely do a lot of these things that have super high graphics, super high uh, performance costs, and there you go. <laughs> you know this this type of thing will help in a lot of situations, uh, and I think this may be the new standard going forward if we're going to continue on this remote work uh, remote work thing because you just can't deal with that much data and send it over internet providers uh, of people's homes. Correct. So. Don't know if it's the, uh, don't know if it's the, it wouldn't be the light at the end of the tunnel. It would be the darkness at the end of the tunnel for Google, but it is definitely, they obviously are starting to realize that the service and its current iteration, its current form is not sustainable yeah. long-term, which I think we all knew, but now I think Google yeah. might finally be well, <laughs> realizing that. Recent things, I think really cemented that, put the yeah. nail in the coffin, I should say, of, you know, just them losing things and just a lot of the industry. And, uh, Game Pass, things that they did not see when they first started uh, getting this project going that have changed the whole market. And I think there is a place for this, but I don't think the game cloud gaming part of it is going to be uh, taken by them, which it usually isn't. Google's usually the first in, <laughs> first out. Yeah. Well, at least in its current iteration. I mean, it could be down the yeah. line, but the way that Stadia is currently, I don't want to lament it, but the way usually that they, is they start it. Yeah, maybe usually they'll start it. Other companies will come and do it a little bit better. And maybe Google will come back. Because look at what they've been doing with their streaming things. They've been coming up, putting them in TVs and coming up with better ways where they're not providing the hardware. They're providing the platform. They could do this in a lot of other ways too. You remember Google TV back in like 2010? It was those cool Android boxes that they sold. They were so yeah. cool. It was way ahead of the the Roku. And the Roku was out, but way ahead of the Roku, the Amazon Fire. It was pretty mm -hmm. much the Google TV and uh, Apple, yeah. the early generations of the Apple TV. The, Google TV was super cool device. 
and yep. Roku, the likes of Roku and Amazon just kind of ate their, they, they didn't innovate. They just, they stopped rolling out new yep. devices and Roku and Amazon just kind of gobbled up that market. But that's the problem with Google is they don't like to stay ahead on most of those. They've been doing it with phones, I think, because it's so important for them to have that Android operating system. They actually have to have a device that they can test all the latest of whatever it is in the Android operating system on. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's one of the only things where I've really seen them kind of stay current with most hardware. Well, of course, I haven't heard of any Pixels recently. Yeah, I don't know. So the maybe they a Pixel. Well, I, I haven't. So, I mean, I, I figured they're still releasing Pixels, but I haven't heard any announcements of Pixels in the last year. So I don't know. Maybe maybe they are backing away from Pixels as well. I'm looking at uh, let's see what the latest release is. Yeah, it looks like they've I got see a, a Pixel new phone. 4a. 4a. It looks like it's not even out yet. You can. Okay, buy so they're it. still releasing. They're still they're still releasing their. I figured they would because they tend to release them with the operating system, always having the latest operating system. So people that want to have the latest and greatest Pixel or Android operating system usually will carry a Pixel because they get it before every other carrier. Yeah. So I guess, you know, so I, I assume that that's one of the one that they'll keep pushing out. Uh, beyond that, what hardware do they really keep up on? I, I, they've never kept on up on hardware of any other device they've ever put out. Correct. So well, we'll see. We'll see where it we goes. We shall see. Yes, we absolutely will. So there's uh, there's Google. All right. Um, so here's some other things kind of following up. We were talking about cheaters the last couple mm. weeks. Okay. And Bungie and Ubisoft are now filing a joint lawsuit to take Destiny 2 and Rainbow Six Siege cheaters to court. So how about um, all the uh, Halo 3 cheaters back in the day that made my <laughs> childhood miserable? Can we take can I take those people to court and sue for punitive damages? Because um, oh, I no. mean, you know, nothing worse than getting your ass kicked on Xbox 360 to a cheater way back yep. in the day. I don't care about Destiny 2 or Rainbow Six. I want my damn reparations. Well, and this is the thing. So we've got <laughs> what one thing they're going after are these subscription services cuz a lot of these cheats these aren't like one-time downloads. They get you on a subscription Expensive because cheats have to change. Too. Uh, yeah. Now this one so this one in particular sold a 25 euro a week cheat. So that's 100 euros a week. I'm not sure what the trans you know the conversion rate is at the moment, but usually that's hundred dollars american thirty dollars a week depending on it's a lot yeah, to be cheating. about thirty dollars a week <laughs> it's a, almost a yes. hundred dollars it's a, almost a hundred dollars a month to cheat that's or excuse me over yes. it's 120 dollars <laughs> a month to cheat that's a significant amount of money my internet yeah. like, and i'm and, trying to think of what monthly what monthly services do you pay more than 120 dollars for besides power maybe internet you, you know you're not what do for, you for me i pay i pay right about that i've I pay right about that for my internet, but I have yeah. gigabit. You know, that's and what I'm that's saying. That's an so I could pay much less if I wanted to for my internet. But could you, I, I can't. And this is a this is a service. This is SaaS, right? You're not getting yeah. a physical. You know, at least with the internet, you're getting so a physical all, product all delivered does, to your house. It, yeah, it just gives you pretty much your wow. aimbot, ESP tools, you know, whatever the various set of tools. It's just included in that twenty five dollars a week, and yeah. if you stop paying, now that's the the, the first tier. Then it's thirty dollars, thirty euros a week. Uh, you get the Destiny 2 hacks, which have Damn. PvP, aimbot, and all these other things. Um, so they, on July 23rd, they filed this lawsuit against Ring One in California, and uh, and they're going after uh, after this whole group. So we'll see what happens. Uh, th th who knows if they'll actually get anywhere? They'll probably just do a large fine. Maybe some people will go to jail. Um, you know, another company will start up and start making cheats in their place. Yeah, I don't. I'm, I'm, I don't know. Eventually, though, it will make a it, it'll make a difference. Well, they make it a small. It depends on how they'll ridiculous probably just go these after people them. are. They'll go after them for for uh, damages. I would be surprised. I mean, people have gone to jail, but it, for depending on the amount, they might put them in jail just until you know. To, uh, who knows? Usually, sometimes they'll put them in jail for a little bit, depending on how aggravated it was. But if yeah. it's just purely fiscal, they may just do a fine and have them on probation until it's paid. Yeah. Now, uh, are it does this article doesn't state are these this group Ring One are they even in the United States? Because it seems like their pricing is done in euros, indicating that they are not. So if there's no people in the U.S., that's going to be a tough. They're not going to extradite somebody for a for a a uh, California district court. So that's yeah, and I was looking for locations in here in, in the because I have a copy of the lawsuit here where they're talking about 
uh, like the names. In the name. This is a this is a literal lawsuit, and this is, these are the names in it. Because you know, like if I was suing Brian, it would be, you know, Nick Nicholas Craig versus Brian Aldridge. Well, here are some of the names in the lawsuit: Crypto, overpowered in Berserker. <laughs> so those are the oh, names yeah, of and Grizzly. You got Grizzly. Oh, Grizzly. Of course, those are some of the individuals, the plaintiffs Grizzly. that they're going after. I find that to be quite ironic. <laughs> Could you imagine if one of them had like yeah, a I'm really like. Like one of those usernames where it's a like you know, like a, uh, you know, a swear word or an even bigger word, an, a no no internet word, like in their username, yeah. and they had to write that in the lawsuit. Like that would be hilarious. <laughs> someday. So okay, I found I found some locations. So first, okay, first got? of all, Grizzy is based out of Indiana. He's a musician. Uh, Grizz. Mm -hmm. yeah, he was here this yeah. weekend. and then Indiana, also so. uh, Ahmed. Is based out of Indiana. Um, Indiana or India? Indiana. Indiana. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. These are, they're, I'm just seeing people based out of Indiana so far. So it looks like most likely these are, I would assume they wouldn't have filed a lawsuit in the United States if it would have, if they were dealing with people outside the United States. Kind of feeling that most of these people, they may have a few people that aren't, but it is kind of weird. I wonder if because maybe like Destiny 2 is, based is that studio based in europe i mean you know maybe the studio that happens to oversee that that product is based out of europe so they're doing it in euros i don't know it's kind of weird they're filing in yeah. in the united states hmm. is the ring is their website still up oh yeah it is can you buy any of these yeah you can still purchase it well yeah they Twi haven't shut down yet holy i this is this is a lot. I mean, you're talking like it must be there. Okay, I have an idea. Seventy dollars a month for these cheap. That's a lot of money. Like yeah. I, I can't. Do get you know? That. Do you know why? Do you know why mo uh, most likely it's in euros? Uh because they're for probably using it. Yeah, they're using an ad. Yeah, that's that's. They probably Ooh, could, right. they're worried about getting canceled by United States payment provider. We can buy some cheats for Hunt Showdown, a game that I don't believe anybody. Oh, I mean plays. that game was. <laughs> No sway. I mean, you run around no sway. Yeah, ESP. It's just amazing. Kind of makes you sad about gaming. Dead side. <laughs> you know, I'm playing. Why the hell would you buy cheats for Dead Side? The game's in early alpha. Probably because it was so easy. You know, I mean, just because you know well, that's the thing is all these yet. games are on this on on uh, Unreal. So I'm sure the the cheats that work for Dead Side are oh, pretty it's probably much the, the same easy anti. Yeah, else. they're probably they probably just bypass. They probably just figured out how to bypass easy anti cheat, and these are all just the engines using, or you, you know, all the games using easy anti cheat. Can you buy for more than one? No, I was just seeing if you could like buy like a yearly subscription to see how that works. But they, well, yeah, they well, probably want to keep it yeah, month to monthly. Month. Damn. Well, they obviously don't care because they're they're still selling them. So they're still up and selling. I mean, you got to you got to afford a lawyer, right? <laughs> the Tarkov one. Oh my god, a hundred and thirty-five euros a month. That's crazy. Nearly but they must that's, be, that's a hundred. And, that's almost a hundred and seventy dollars. They're cheat. probably so. Pro probably what they're doing is most likely they're setting a price where they kind of limit the number of cheats that are out there because they don't want everybody having this cheat because then it's going to be more likely to get d detected. So you want to pay more uh, to have it in less people's computers, and then that way uh, you're less likely to get your your cheat detected and then blocked. So this is what the menu for the Tarkov one looks like. You can see all of the different. So like this one, it will enable containers. It'll show you the outline of the containers. You can change the color. It's a pretty, I mean, it's a, it looks like it's a well done sheet. I mean, this is a pretty, this is yeah. a legitimate looking menu. Um, I hope they, I hope. Yeah, they it's, just, it's done professionally. Sucks. Yeah. The, well, oh, this I can't is, even buy this son of a you... bitch. It only supports Intel CPUs. Will not work with an AMD processor. Well, damn. So they must be taking advantage of some glitch in Intel CPUs to be able to hook into the process. Yeah, I have no idea, but I no bet idea. you that's what it is. And Windows 10. I bet you that's what it is. Can remember all those issues Intel chips were having and why Intel is kind of because they started yeah, unlocking their processors it's too much. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's so, just they had a whole row of them in, in like a, in the same year, of, and it kind of just tanked everybody's confidence in Intel, and they had to lower the performance on. Uh, like cloud uh, platforms because it, they had it to where you could steal uh, data from other vms because of the cpu and they had other ones because of memory it's just it's crazy so 
I want to try to. Uh, buy that's one most of these likely what, what they're using. Process. Oops, sorry about that. I want to try to buy one of these and see what processor they're using. I'm genuinely curious what processor hasn't shut them down. Hmm. Yeah, I have to create an account. Never mind. Well, worth the try. Oh, you're talking about what credit card processor? Yeah, I was genuinely curious what processor was allowing this because normally, all it takes is the company to go at like a company like Ubisoft. They're using PaySafe card. That's their processor. Pay safe card. So normally what it's it takes, probably one that doesn't really have restrictions. Yeah, but normally what it takes is like somebody like Bungie and Ubisoft to say, Hey, you processor, you're conducting illegal activity with our thing, shut these guys down. Normally that's well, that, and that's, that's what happens. It's probably a lot easier for them to do that in the United States to get it shut down. This you know, is true. You pretty much the go and so I think they're going to a country that's less I'd have to look at where that's based out, but you know, it's probably based out of some uh, copyright loose uh, country. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Oh, so they also that's charge an Bungie. extra fee. They charge another ten percent if you're using oh, credit card a, processing a, a, fee? a credit card ten percent. Good lord, man! These well, guys are I think out sometimes like that's probably bandits. With, I bet you some of the if you're but the problem is if you use a credit card, then you get charged a conversion fee. Yeah. So they're charging you extra to cover that conversion fee to get it two euros. Yeah. So this now, is some, okay. I that's the think some credit so, cards will, yeah, cover that so, for you. But. So their processing company pay it's called Pay Safeguard and it is a European processor. Their revenue in yep. 2016 was almost 200 million dollars. So they're they're not a small. Yeah. Okay. Group. Yeah, and we'll see. I mean. It looks like the, at least with these guys, they looks like most of them are in the United States. You mm -hmm. actually can get this. Uh, the ones based out of Asia, India, uh, you know, sometimes you get them out of the Middle East or, or in uh, Russia. It's China. Just, good luck. Yeah, China. Get good luck getting anything out of there legally. So yes. here's one we can actually do. Let's uh, let's talk about one of the games that we've got here, Brian. A survival game by the name of Icarus. Is this is the Dean Hall. Uh, yes, one that's kind of based on Dean, Dean Hall's work. Everybody's favorite um, is being delayed. This is the Daisy creator. Um, it was supposed yeah. to be out uh, well next week, August 11th, and they announced. Mm. Uh, when did they announce? Oh, they announced kind three of a days last ago. minute. Uh, I'm yeah. sure that uh, oh, <laughs> a week from release, they knew long ago they weren't going to be hitting, especially if they're pushing it out. Are we? We're at, just under six months now. I mean, this is, they, they've pushed out almost half a year um, when it, it's supposed to be released in the week. The, the, we had some other games do this too. So, so it's not coming it's out now until coming the new, same thing. November, but what they are still doing is their beta weekend. Oh, is it November of this year or never? Okay. No, November, November, of November of this year. year. Okay. So yeah. it's, it's a couple of months. I was thinking it was going to be the very beginning. I mean, so that's it's, only a month after that or a month. Yeah, but still that. it's, well, no, it's, I mean, it was supposed to come out August. Yeah, August, but I'm saying, I was thinking it was going to be coming out like November. January, January, oh, what I was thinking got, got when, I, yes. when I was speaking. So. so they are still doing so, their beta roadmaps, though. They've got one the weekend of the August 28th, September the 11th, uh, August, September the 25th, October the 9th, October 23rd, and then the 6th of November is this. So they still, it's not like the game is unplayable. It looks like they're just delaying it. Yeah. A little well, and one thing, I, another thing I, I think we mentioned at the time, but people didn't, I don't think everybody caught, is they switched from free to play to a paid model in June because so it was supposed to be a free to play game. And then, I, but personally, I'm fine. I'd rather, if it's a game that I'm interested in, I'd rather have it be a paid game just so I can have most of the things and not have to deal with all the, uh, you know, the pay to win mechanics or, or the microtransactions. Looking at, it looks like they're. Yeah, I like this. I like this one beta test. The base building skills you learned in the first beta weekend will be put to the test as storms damage your structures. Ooh, look at that. That's pretty neat. Oh, and you have to. Mm -hmm. Little lightning keep strike up, keep burning down your uh, cottage. That that would suck. <laughs> well, it looks like a lot of these are. So these are all biome tests for the most part. The beginning Correct. is at least. So forest. So they're doing a forest biome and then a storm. I guess environment you call it. Yes. Then an Arctic uh, biome, a desert biome. Then they're doing the missions and then community things, which is probably 
competitions that they're great quests and things like that. Yeah. So, so. I, I, I'm not going to pre purchase it, which you can do by the way, they still haven't updated their date on steam. It still says it's coming out in eight days. Um, yeah, but I will, uh, I, I mean, if it's good, I'll give it a shot, I guess. Yeah. And, and, and they said that if you participate in the beta, beta or whatever, it doesn't count against your, uh, refund hours. You know how, Steam will yes. do a thing where you can, if you play a certain amount of hours, it won't count against that. So yeah. uh, if that's holding you back, don't let it. All right, Brian, let's do it. We got to crack open the uh, bookcase here. <laughs> All hell is breaking loose at Blizzard Activision. Blizzard. Um, and we announced last week the planned walkout, right? That was kind of Wednesday. the precursor to a lot of this. Yeah. yeah. So we announced the walkout. That walkout <laughs> did happen. Um, and then, you know, now we've got a lot of things happening this week. First of all, you've got the president uh, is out. <laughs> the president is out of the company and it's now going to be co-led by a woman for the first time in history. So, uh, you know, I mean, freaking, just I mean, just from hearing about this, I already know her qualifications signaling. are through the roof. I mean, just through that that intro that they've given us. I just can't wait. <laughs> she so, is, yeah, the article, she is a woman. <laughs> oh, okay, great. She, oh, oh, that's great. She has, so she has a good, yes, that's so, so nice. Um, so July 20th, the California Department of Fair Employment and Housing filed a lawsuit against Blizzard Activision, collecting numerous complaints about unlawful harassment, discrimination, and retaliation um, at, that happened at this company. So shortly afterwards, you know, they had this open letter. They had uh, all the things happening with, with the walkout and everything. And so now they... Uh, they, they announced today that J. Allen uh, Brack is leaving his position as the president of the studio to be replaced by uh, Jen O'Neill and Mike Gabara, you know, I think Gabara, as co-heads of the studio. So you have a man and a woman uh, that will be leading the helm, and hopefully that will keep some accountability, because I guess a lot of people are pissed. Now, let's go into a few of the things. Wait, hold on. That, we got to do this, uh, because I just pulled this picture of okay. PH says, is that a sign that says, please donate? I believe it is. Let's see if we can figure out what this girl wants us to donate for. Something.com. These are it's a bunch black, of websites. Black something. Black I, thought something it said black, I thought it said black rock and I was like, that doesn't make sense. They're all websites. Something.org rain. R a I N. -N I'm not going to any of these rain.org. What the hell pain. does that have? Pa uh, yeah, uh, yeah, you're right. It might be pain. Let's see. Let's open it. So. I'm going. I'm kind of scared to go to these websites. What, yeah. what they might be? <laughs> well, pain.org. It might be an R. Anywhere. Let's go with an R. Rain.org. Ah, yes. Okay, so this is a, okay. This is an actual group. This is the nation's largest anti-sexual violence organization. Okay. There you go. Okay, that makes a that makes a little bit more sense. Then I was just like, what are these? Just some random. So donating <laughs> to causes. Yeah. Okay. I, I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be some bitches Venmo and be like, please donate because <laughs> that's you know. That would make absolutely no sense. Okay, I'll, I'll give them credit for that. <laughs> so stupid, All right, but. so, yeah. So this is, so this is happening. Um, they also... Job. Well, well, the one guy is. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> okay, the, but the that wasn't his... I mean, okay, <laughs> touche. But that wasn't necessarily his You're talking about the employees. Okay, <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, okay. Let, but let's look at it from both sides. Now, oh, I thought, got him high resolution different... image. Oh, okay, good. Here you go. Now you can actually read them. That's, I want to look at all these. Every voice matters for women's rights. Unaccountable corporate bureaucrats are driving the best employees out of Activision Blizzard. Well, obviously not. And forced <laughs> arbitration. So remember we talked about our, uh, forced arbitration uh, yes. or arbitration back. Uh, so that was one thing. Um, no, okay, I like this girls code dot com. Nerf, Nerf this. this. That's, that's pretty funny. I like that. That's from Overwatch. Yeah, um, you got yeah, blackgirlscode.com, futurewithoutviolence.org, girlswhocode.org, rain.org, womeninanimation.org, and get wiggy, something with girls in who knows, dot com. Yeah. So, okay, so this. Hmm. Sorry. Let's I'm, go. Sorry, let's, I was generally interested. <laughs> I apologize. Let's talk about kind of some of the things about this. For instance, sure. uh, Kotaku, I mean, which is always our first source of, uh, of, of news like this. I wake up every but morning. But they were talking about... Chuck and Taco. They were talking about what they call the Bo Bill Cosby suite that <laughs> yeah, was this is in... Uh, funny. This is, is that Blizzard. And it actually has a picture of Bill Cosby in the suite. 
Okay. Uh, and there's a to picture that fair, leaked. To be fair, this is from 2013. And by the way, yes. I will say this. An innocent man, according to the court system, he is a free man. He is not guilty of I was, anything. I was thinking that too. So what's the issue here? The, the, the judicial system has determined he's innocent. He's, he's a free man. So what's the issue here? Yep. What's wrong with a little... What's wrong with a little pudding pop? I mean, obviously there's no problem. He's a he, if he was a rapist, he'd be in jail, but he's not. So uh, this I this is a bullshit argument. OJ's well, innocent, this uh, is, Bill Cosby's innocent. The court has proven both of those. But and so and the, and part of these things didn't happen, you know, it, he wasn't known as being this person at that point in time, right? Yeah. Uh I don't think so. I think that was right around the time that things started, you know, there was hints but it wasn't something that was really well known. So I, I, I don't know. I just don't think, I think this whole Bill Cosby thing has nothing to do with sex. Zero oh, I think it absolutely. No, I, I think this is a joke that guys in their twenties and thirties make when they're trying to have a party with girls at their hotel room at a convention, because that's what you do at conventions. Sorry. Hate but to the, be the bearer of bad But the news, thing but. is, is, I'm just looking at the dates, though. I mean, it, it, there were hints that this was happening. Maybe it had something to do with it. It but did, because it literally there's a chat I, that says the BlizzCon Cosby crew, and it says, I'm gathering hot chicks for the cause. Bring them. Greg, are you on the way? You can't marry okay. all of them, Alex. You misspelled fuck <laughs> at the Hilton bar. Come up to the Cosby. This is, this is what happens at conventions. Well, so, and this is what happens at conventions when you have a bunch of dudes hanging out together. And I think that's yeah, I mean, been their biggest thing. But, but I mean, this is I, just what guys, this is, this is what we all do in Vegas, things like this. Well, okay. Well, I want to say it for the record. I I mean, I'm not sure exactly what happened in the I Cosby am, suite, I but. am not doing any of this at all in Las Vegas. I want to say for the record, not, <laughs> I will be going to Vegas to have a good time with my friends. There will be... None of okay. no none of this speech. going on. No, absolutely, Brian. You're bringing your wife for Christ's sakes. <laughs> I know. I'll try to keep her in line. I'm sorry. <laughs> she actually um, might be the one encouraging the cosmic I, suit if I knew her. Well I, pro enough, I, I promise you. Yes. Um, sorry. All right. So, <laughs> okay. Uh, we one thing we've been seeing is other companies stepping in and giving their comments on uh, on <laughs> on this. So, Take Two CEO, of course, says we will not tolerate harassment or discrimination. Oh wow! Um, you know, I, I know. So that's that's a you know a male CEO who's kind of scared for his job. Scared for his uh, job. Standing there, bingo. <laughs> He's like, oh, don't please. fire me. Oh, we stand, <laughs> we stand with you. I promise. I, I'll say only oh, nice things. Oh Christ! I don't <laughs> want to lose my salary and my pension, and my benefits. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you've got other other companies, other gaming uh, studios, and and companies coming out and really kind of getting behind this. Uh, it's, there's always a cause kind of going around. I think in general, the best thing is to treat people you work with how you want to be treated by them, you know, as long as it's within respectful means. Well, I mean, here's um, the thing. What's this stuff going on at Blizzard? Absolutely. Should the people yeah. that were perpetrating this stuff at Blizzard uh, be investigated? And then if it's deemed that they were guilty of this, should they lose their jobs? Absolutely. But this notion that the entire I, company of Blizzard industry was just a bunch or of in industry. Yeah, they'll, the they'll whole industry pushing. is a bunch of, uh, you know, smacking female asses in the office and, you know, make constantly sexually harassing or assaulting female coworkers is just bullshit because it's there's, there's no evidence to back it up. I mean, look at what's going on with the governor of New York for right now. This stuff's just going on today. Are there instances where this yeah. has happened in Blizzard? Absolutely. Are there instances where this has happened in every other large company? Absolutely. Yep. But let's let, let's put it on the scale where it's actually happening, and it's not every single female at Blizzard is being targeted and sexually assault, assaulted or harassed. That's just bullshit. There's it, it, it's completely. Yeah. There's just nothing. And to the back culture. It up I mean, all. well, that's the thing is is I've heard you know you hear guys talking about certain things, but there was no I you know they weren't angling that at a particular. They're acting in ways that particular. Well, I wouldn't act at work. But uh, if they broke policies, which when I mean, you have to look at, I don't know. I just that people will take something like that, which is a bunch of guys just acting foolishly at a well, convention, go, well, going and now to say that the, they're raping girls in a room. 
is well, the problem. Going back to the to the Cosby thing is a great example. I mean, these guys were obviously trying to hook up with hot chicks from BlizzCon. So yeah. what? Which, okay, <laughs> and what do rock stars do? Uh, now, at, at conventions, at BlizzCon, who are the rock stars? Those developers that work at Blizzard. What uh, are not the, women the guys doing? that we just saw in those walkout pictures. I can guarantee you. It's okay, but, but, but the women going to BlizzCon... <laughs> The women going to BlizzCon because they love uh, WoW, for instance, most likely won't have an issue with these dudes. Fun facts. Uh, so I think that I think that will the for them, if anything, they're using their role to get women to sleep with them or men to sleep with them. If you know, depending on however they go, um, that if they if that's something they don't want people sleeping with with clients which is the equivalent of that because these are subscribers to their service every single one who comes to blizzcon is paying them money somehow i make that a policy say you're not allowed to sleep with attendees of the conference yes. make it a rule is it a rule if it's not then you can't tell them they can't go try to get as many of the women from the conference i mean it's crude but is it again it's, it's work but, policy but, but, i haven't seen but, it yet okay i i'm gonna i'm gonna have to disagree with you is it crude no i don't think so this is the conventions to be talking for, to a coworker, but but talking to a coworker. Well, coworker about, is different. Coworker is yeah, different. That, that is what I'm talking about. Crude for a work yes. environment is crude. If if we were going there joking about it, it wouldn't be crude because you're friends. These are coworkers. Sure, you get close to people you work with, but you have to keep that line. Yes, but with now work. sleeping with some random girl at BlizzCon, it, consensually, what's the issue? What culture yeah. is that? I just that to me does not seem to be an issue, and if that makes me a misogynist yeah. piece of shit, then fine. But consensually well, in having relations with somebody at a convention, which by the way is what happens at every convention ever, it doesn't matter if it's gaming, political, not speaking firsthand experience or any other events. That's exactly well, that's what happens. That's what's happened. That that's literally yeah. the big re the big reason for these conventions is for you to get drunk and have sex. Yeah, That's probably. why they spend all this money. <laughs> the companies love it. <laughs> Nissan Communications so, says I, only if there was a blizzard in the area. So, yeah, I disavow uh -huh, that statement, yeah. Nissan Communications. Please get your head out of the gutter. Uh -huh. that's, that's a very inappropriate comment mm -hmm. to be making. Bru that is not but endorsed by Infection Podcast. All right. So now, <laughs> um, one thing they've said is Activision revenues are up. Uh, the blizzard are down amid this sexism scandal. So stock uh, so blizzard has lost almost 29% of its overall active player base in three years. Um, oh, that's that gotta be because of, of that. today. Well, this is, yeah, it's not because of that. Um, you know, and that was something that they really pushed, uh, you know, there've been layoffs oh. and everything else. Wow. They have, uh, there's a lot going on. Their stock's been going down for the past couple of days though. Yep. That's not, yeah, I mean, I'm, yeah, that's not their stock today specifically is actually since close, it's actually trading up in close, funny enough, but, uh, well, but they announced that they're switching their CEO. So you have people that purchased it just for the fact that to support the decision. Yeah. Well, and, and so but, I but would see, say the thing, there's a bigger, there's a bigger issue here. What is the bigger issue? What was the number you just gave us over a three year period? Uh, 29% of their overall active player base in three years. Sounds like the president That's should have been Blizzard fired for general. that. For being incompetent, yes. unable to lead his company and losing 30% of his player base in the better part of three well, years. Okay. If you're, a board looking for for. if you're a board looking for justification to let a very high paced CPO or CPU or C CEO, whatever he is, president, I'm trying to remember what he is. About in Mark this. Zuckerberg, CPU. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> CPU. Yeah. We're going to suffer. Answer <laughs> questions. Um, you know, you got a person who's paid very highly. And if you let them go, there's probably a lot of things that they kick in that they get paid a lot of extra money. Well, with this kind of a scandal, I bet you they were able to lower and get out of a lot of contracts um, that, you know, and got him probably to accept a deal that he wouldn't have accepted on any other terms. Yeah. That's my guess. This is a way for them because bad performance, but it costs them a lot of money to release a CEO. And so uh, I think that with this, it, it, you turn around they probably got it to where he almost walked away and it got, you know, still probably for us, it would be a very high severance package. Oh, but I, I think he probably got away away. With a got away with a lot less than what he would have walked away if they were performing very well and there wasn't the scandal. So we'll see.
So what's and they, uh, so one what, thing I noticed too is they they delayed. Remember that mobile game that everybody got pissed about that really kind of started that whole thing of the anti Blizzard. Uh, yeah, back a couple Dude, don't years ago. Do you not have you phones? Have phone? When they say, do, <laughs> yeah. do you not have phones? Right, that whole thing. That game has been delayed. <laughs> so not I saw a notice today that so they're delaying that one as well. Uh, and that seems like that was kind of like the first that I saw of that anti Blizzard in, in this series that's kind of continued. That whole anti Blizzard kind of started with a lot of that. That kind of gave yeah. people a hey, you know, we all hate Blizzard, and they've just been continuing it now with the with these other things coming up. So yeah. Well, um. Was so one, the, I was so, going to mention so, one other. But, so my question is: So what? What's next? Well, I mean, outside of the uh, alleged, well, I don't even know what you'd call these things. Blizzard is obviously having major issues as a company. Yeah, I, I was. We were. Ta I was talking I, to PH think, in Discord earlier. Seems like Activision just needs to swell that all up, and it just become Activision because Activision seems to be doing great. Right, their profits are up. Yeah. Their user base is is, is soaring. So but I think part of the problem with Blizzard is Blizzard, first of all, their game engines, they've been patching game engines for 20 something years, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think that I just, Blizzard, I don't feel like is in a good spot. They're in a, they're locked to certain products that have been around for a long, long time. They're not releasing very many new products. Uh, their, their subscription rates dropping dramatically. I just think they're in a very bad spot. Um, you know, and I think that it's going to take a lot of changes and i think some of these changes that may be coming from like the things that are happening today may not be positive for the company we may start seeing even more of a decline because there's so much politicking happening in the company that you can't get anything done i mean it's just it, it we'll have to see where this goes but i think this could either be something where if you get good management because it's hard when you just put in new management all of a sudden because you don't know what's going to happen you don't the know CEO if they're actually going to be good there, right? or bad bobby Kotnick the ceo over there. the whole company yeah. But pretty much, I think the, the head of the studio, a Blizzard, uh, you know, the, the, that subsection of it is out. So why is he an Activision there? Blizzard? Because he's probably claiming it wasn't under his, you know, he, he wasn't, he was being reported to by somebody who wasn't yeah, but making I mean, him, he wasn't setting the culture is probably what he'll say. If the woke mob wants to take it to the bank, get, get him out. Well, this is the guy who is the top of that particular chain. You know what I'm saying? Mm, At that yeah. point, it goes to a joint chain. That's the last of that chain for Blizzard. For He is yeah. the last chain for Blizzard itself. And so they must have viewed, okay, well, he's the head of all of it. He takes responsibility. And the other person's doing very well. They don't want to get rid of that guy. They want to get rid of the guy who's had 29% drop. You want to know what Bobby... You, guess what Bobby Kotnick's net worth is? Huh? Guess. Uh, uh, two billion. Uh, okay, I'll go with million. Oh. Uh, I'll go with seven hundred million. Pretty close, six hundred. Oh, okay, yeah, I was trying, trying to think something that would be loaded, realistic. Loaded, loaded. Well, and these guys, the, the, all these original people from the company. I mean, they might as well just go retire. I mean, if it's going to get crazy and everybody's going to start getting thrown on the bus for things that happened 10, 15 years ago, that's when you say, "I'd like to retire." You know, have a nice day. I just, I can see that happening with a lot of. I've seen some people high up already stepping away from the company, but just because of the culture and what's happening. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if you lose a lot of the others here pretty soon because they don't want pictures of them in the Cosby room. They don't want all these things coming up and ruining their career. Move yeah. on now. If they want to either get out of it, they can be done. Or if they want to move on to another uh, company, they can before their name's dragged to the mud. PH makes a good point. Says the shareholders love Bobby. So he's staying. Yeah, I get, you know, that's really all that matters at the end of the day. Is the stock doing well? Well, we'll keep it going. And I think that's what it came down to was pretty much the shareholders and everybody saying, you know, because they were getting ready to do the report. They wanted to do that before it came out so they could say, all right, things are bad, but things are changing. So we'll be all right. Their quarter trade report was a disaster. Yeah. They failed. Yeah, they've, they been not, they've not been doing misery. very well. Yep. Yeah, they've, they've not been doing well. The thing is, is, uh, you know, they thought everybody was want wanting to come back for uh, WoW Classic. Um, they, th you know, and there's some people playing it, but you know, it's not what I think they expected. Um, World of Warcraft, I just, I don't have time to play it right now. I think, you know, and I, I think I still pay a subscription, but I just, I don't have time to play. And so, you know, I just think that there's a lot of people that game, that type of game is fading out. And I think the problem is you had so many people playing it that they're just tapering off over time. I think it's eventually going to die, uh, because it's everything's so out of date. Uh, the technology, there's so many limitations to what they can do. 
Uh, you have all these, it, the thing runs on really old computers. They have, and they're trying to keep it that way. So they never make anything more modern. It's just, there's a lot of issues. And I, I don't think they're like, set up for, for good success. It's like, that's where it's, that's what I was saying. It's almost like the blizzard name needs to go away and it just Activision needs to become. Well, yeah. active, you know, the thing is they, they need to figure out how much further do we want to go with wow? How many more expansions do you want to put out on this product? You know, I just want to have it be like EverQuest, where it just continues forever with a few, you know, however many people are playing it. Or do you want to go to WoW 2, put it on a new engine? Like, you know, start moving forward from this product. Yeah, I don't think and WoW you, how, how far is it going to have to drop? How, well, they're, they've been discussing it. There's been hints at it. But I don't think it would be as successful nearly. I just don't oh, think it's some, a good thing. Some new breaking news, Brian. The head of HR at Blizzard has also been fired. This departure okay. happened in the wake of employees accusing the HR department of covering up abuses. J. Allen Brock is gone. Well, Brack, yeah, that Brack. someone in our chat was mentioning them earlier. Yeah. Um, you know, and this, this, I think this is going to come back to them just trying to cover uh, because remember that we talked about earlier how they did the litigation, how they deal with complaints. I think that person is is getting out because they're taking the fall for that, right? And then now they're going to come in and say there's no more of that uh, type of litigation that you can sue the company, you can do all these, you know, whatever you want to do, um, or sue individuals in the company, and not have to do through that internal court system. Yeah. Damn, well, that's, that's just my guess. Yeah. The so that's is a, a lot going on there. Uh, Nova Novocaine says the problem is a toxic culture, and you can't change that overnight. It's it's ingrained. Ingrained, well, see, yeah. And, my, but my but, but my there's, real there's question two different is different toxic cultures. Well, that's my real question is how toxic is the culture? And that's what I've yet to really see. And I'm not, again, I'm not trying to discount anything that people are saying, but how I'm still waiting to figure out how widespread this yeah, toxic is. culture is. Is this truly Cause, cause the Cosby the suite company? to me isn't toxic. It's and not, I don't see anything with, with that Cosby suite. That's a joke. A, guy, a bunch of guys making a joke, right? And they're not, uh, th those and, guys are, those guys are like those, by the looks of that, those guys are not managers. They're just a bunch of, there's a bunch of programmers, um, programmers and employees that want to fuck around at a convention. So again, yeah. my question still stands. How widespread is this culture? And then I think you can figure out and try to deal with it. But it's not, I just, I refuse to believe that the entire company of Blizzard with its hundreds of employees, that's the culture for the entire company. I refuse to believe that because I haven't yeah. seen any evidence to prove it that way. And if you look at the picture of the employees themselves, I mean, if anything, they're complaining that the management is an issue. Um, you know, because look at all those employees. I mean, I would say that the, most of those employees don't, aren't an even cut of the population. I'll tell you that. I think they made a lot of decisions in hiring. So if anything, you know, you're changing it. You could look, view there's two different toxic cultures. There's the the one side where they're, you know, not treating women fairly, but then there's the other side where men aren't getting treated fairly. Like where, how do they find that balance? And if it takes the two, a man and a woman doing it, if that can pull it off to where decisions are made in a reasonable manner that doesn't favor one more than the other, great. My worry is that's not what's going to happen, but I think we'll have to wait to see. Yeah. I mean, Blizzard has 9,500 employees. Yeah. There, that stage protest was, planned protest was maybe 100, maybe 150. That's what I'm saying. And again, how many of those people actually have dealt with that? Or how many of them were just mm -hmm. also part of it? That, that's my question. That's what I'm still waiting to understand. How big of an issue is yep. this in the company? Until we see that. Yeah, I and, and I haven't seen anything judgment. accurate. Yeah, I haven't seen anything accurate saying one way or the other. Um, one thing I wanted to mention is, so remember that that one government agency was suing Activision Blizzard, Activision Blizzard, as we mentioned before, but they also have a lawsuit going against Riot Games. Um, and this was against pay discrimination, sex, sexual harassment, and retaliation by riot so this is filed in 2018 um so this is you know going on at riot as well Riot, of course is owned by tencent games um this wow. is based now the company this company's owned by pretty much uh china at this point so where you're gonna i mean you're gonna sue china, this you know whatever in the united states but who are you really going after uh at this point you know it's no longer owned by an america you know anyone in america now 
Tencent. We got some things coming out. Or we were limited on time, so we just got to. I want to hit this yeah, we, before we, we get out of time, here. Yeah. Okay. So Tencent, uh, their stocks have plunged this week because uh -oh. there's been some reports out of China that China is going to start cracking down on gaming. And well, what we heard killed, a little bit about this. Yeah. What killed what what killed H uh, one Z one or you know uh, what killed it? How much? Pretty how much, much time? End. How much time do you have for me to explain to you all the things that killed well, H1Z1? But was what was it at the end that really really hung the company itself? Do you remember what what they did that we kind of caught? Oh, is that when they made the game free to play? No, I'm talking when they really started catering to China rather than the United oh, States. Oh, they changed the, the player. Car. They were in the blood. Yeah, when they started doing all that and really yeah. just making the game and really focused, they were making so much money off of China purchases and Cheers not the United States, and, and they really yeah. started. Yeah, they started making the game for for China, and not for the United States anymore. And I think that that's when it really uh, just tanked. And I think there's a lot of companies doing this now. And I think if China cracks down on gaming, you're going to have a lot of companies that are now realizing that that investment, that decision was a very poor decision. I mean, it, it almost ended Daybreak. Um, and here you've got other companies that are doing the exact same type of things that they think are going to be ended as well. So uh, one thing that the Co Chinese Communist Party's propaganda department announced that games need to be good, clean, and secure. So that's their new statement. This also, wasn't it just three or four weeks ago, we covered a story in which after 10 p.m. and before 8 a.m., you have to... Kids can't play. You have well, to like you, hold yeah, up your phone to, to, like, you to like... Verify your identity. Verify your identity, yep. yeah. So... Yeah, of course they're cracking down. This is not surprising at all. No. And so the, what they're using, what the Chinese uh, Communist Party is using is uh, what they're calling gaming uh, spiritual opium for kids. I don't know what this, you know, you got, yeah, I think there's things happening in translation here. You know, they have different terms. That's a, sh that's a shot uh, at what, the U.S. because the U.S. got a lot of folks in Asia hooked on opium during wars. So that's yes, that's and a pretty so, and, that's and a they, very cool, and they view it as ravaging their country. Thing. Yeah, just like oh yeah, they, they they brought a term from history because if you look at during the Vietnam War and times like this, we were taking opium through that country like crazy, and people were making tons of money because of the war as cover uh, of of moving opium and then using military flights to trans. And they've done the same thing in the last couple of wars. I mean, they move lots of drugs on military flights, uh, yeah. but on this, they're they're kind of comparing it to that. They view that video games and all this are kind of destroying uh, their younger generation. Because you got to remember, over there, they have a very different culture than we do here. Uh, things that, if you, especially in Japan and certain, you know, outside of China, especially, uh, there's cultures that would view very, very, very much down on you sitting there playing games for you know hours a day. That just would be a horrible thing. And so I think you're getting kind of that old school culture now fighting this new school culture. And uh, and this is becoming the result. I don't know how far uh, China is going to go. This could be very bad news for Riot. This could be. I mean, you name all these companies uh, that have that were purchased up or have large stakes by Tencent. Um, you know, this uh, this could cause some major issues for a lot of these games that are making a decent profit in China. Good. Then we can get back oh. to not cowtailing to China for our games. That would actually be great. I know. It'd be funny if, like, it'd be funny if China is the one that actually ended their dominance of the gaming industry. Yeah, it would <laughs> be just fantastic. Like, you guys are all bad. We don't like you guys. Shut it down. Because it seems like they kind of make these decisions that have billion dollar uh, impacts on a whim. <laughs> I mean, it yeah. just really feels like that. They're like, we don't like gaming. We're kind of shutting it down. Boom. You know, billions of dollars worth of money just flew out the door, yeah. uh, you know, for some place. Um, so they said that the company has lost a total of 110 billion since the start of the week. 110 billion dollars. Yeah, but well, what is China worth? I mean, uh, I mean, yeah, uh, China's worth a lot, but China owns. No, all I mean, that's of why they're probably like they're, That's probably why they're not really that concerned. They're like, for us, and and probably you know, that this. I don't know if they're thinking this is going to impact us negatively. I don't wow. know, it, but. I, that's what I'm saying. I, I'm just trying to think because we oh, have no. companies here, but really, I mean, we could care less. Whoa. We could care less about the <laughs> Chinese. I mean, it, those companies that they have a stake in are the ones hurting, and I don't have stakes in those companies. So, yeah. 
I don't think it's going to affect Epic and, you know, companies like this who are making money many other ways. But, you know, Riot Games, this could affect them heavily because oh, first, they're owned by the company owned. that's being smashed. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Is there anything well, else you wanted to? Oh, oh, wait. Let's just mention a few things because uh, there's some things that are just merely mentions. Yeah. Uh, we don't need to go into any detail. PUBG. There's hints that it's going to be going on PC free to play soon. Ooh. That, okay. Because the, the the PC one is is a paid paid product still. Okay. Uh, Destiny two is almost to the point of being full cross cross platform everywhere. So, uh, and I haven't really seen that very much between on ga console games. I haven't seen. I was thinking that it was going to be um, certain other ones that were doing this. I think Fortnite does it right, but not very many uh, games are actually cross platform across uh, uh, PlayStation, Xbox, and PC. So Destiny two is about to do that. Um, Chronicles of Illyria, their class action lawsuit has now been split up between states. Mm. So probably because of maybe the state that they're in and, you know, there's different things that they can go after and they can't go after from state to state. Yeah. So they are breaking it up based on the states. And then the last thing I wanted to just, if you wanted to show, there was uh, Seven Days to Die. It's like, it's like one minute, but they released a video of their tile tech, you know, how it builds the cities. And one thing I thought was interesting is it looks like it builds them all in one place and then moves them. Like the second that it's fully built, like it then kicks it over and, and places it in a, a plot. So this is their new system, you know, to make it to where they could put cities and everything in place. Hopefully it's a lot more efficient, but I've been seeing a lot of news and I think we'll have, once they get closer to releasing Alpha 20, we'll do a, a bigger thing kind of covering some of the changes because they've been doing a lot in this latest one. Oh yeah, I see that. Cool stuff. So that's it. I just wanted to kind of show they didn't really put any post describing it, but it is kind of cool uh, to see what it's doing, you know, and yeah, how it's placing how it, all this. It, if based on the size of the plot, it, d it determines what it can put yep. there. And these that's are all neat. the same. This is all kind of the same little block, and it's showing you how it just creates all this variation with it. Yeah, a big school. Yeah, that's, that's pretty neat. I like that. Cool. Yep. All right. So I, I, we'll want to get another day where we go and I'll play. Probably in, this, probably in the fall, I would say, because that's when people are starting to kind of come back inside. Um, I think you know we could do a game. If other people actually show play. up, I'll I'll be there. But my oh, by the way, all right. Uh, I did yes. uh, get access, and I'll be trying it this week to the X Defiant. Uh, oh yeah, uh, thing. So I think the beta starts August fifth. I downloaded it already, so I'll uh, give that a shot this weekend and report back. Ne well, I have an NDA. I uh, know, you know, really enforceable NDA. But I'll I'll give it a shot this I weekend know. and uh, and report back next week. Okay, so that'll work. And then so we get some other on. stuff next week. We'll talk about the Steam Deck a little bit more, but uh, hopefully there's a lot more things. This was a lot of industry stuff. We'll see as we get at the end of summer, things kind of usually stabilize to get a little more normal. Yeah. So, well, all right. Hopefully you enjoyed uh, it. If you want to find us. me, yeah. Oh, yeah. If you want to find me at Brian Aldridge on uh, Gab or Parlor, of course, my blog, biteoftech.com, and make sure you go to our website, infectionpodcast.com, join our server on Discord. Uh, there's a place where there's we have uh, news topics that you can uh, post into. So if there's a game, whatever it is that you don't think we're covering, post it in there and we'll review it before the live show. We also have a, a patches. We have a channel called Patches where a lot of the game updates that we used to talk about actually has all the log uh, patch notes in there. So you can keep track of those. Um, if you want to watch the video of the podcast live, you can do that through Twitch, YouTube, BitChute, or DLive. Um, we also have our podcast extras, which have some of the pre and post shows that we do. Just can give an idea of if you caught it live, what you would see. Uh, we also have our audio only forms at the lower right. And so whatever platform, mobile app, desktop app, there's a lot of different ways. The RSS thing works with a lot of different technologies. Uh, it's a good way for you to see new episodes. And if you're going to follow along on that new episode, maybe you're listening and you can't see the videos where you're at, uh, what you could do is following in our, our uh, show notes here. We've got a video and audio player in there. And then all the links that we discuss um, throughout that show. So if you're interested in that, just make sure you check it out. Um, and then uh, we also have Subscribestar, Amazon uh, links. Uh, we have Humble Bundle, uh, all kinds of different things. Prime Gaming, a lot of different ways to support the show. Just go to infectionpodcast.com forward slash support to check it out. Brian, as always, my friend, thank yes. you very much. Appreciate it. We thank will uh, catch up with you next Tuesday. Very Alrighty, good. folks. Talk to you then. We absolutely will. That's going to do it. My name is Nick Craig. You can follow me on various social media platforms. Uh, just go to my website, nickcraig.net. 
If you missed any portion of the show, of course, you can visit our website. It's infectionpodcast.com. Thank you so much for joining us, everybody. Have a great week. We'll see you next time.